All right, welcome back. In this video, we'll be looking at stages of problem solving. Before now, we considered what problems are, uh, the problem solving, just for a recall, we said problems are tasks to be done. Uh, so problem solving is process of analyzing a, a situation with an intention of solving it. The aim is an intention to solve. So we have basically various stages in problem solving, and that's what this particular um, video is all about. So we said stages of problem solving are seven stages. And you know some literature might have five stages, some might have four stages, but we choose to break our own down into seven stages, different stages of problem solving. So number one is problem identification. You know, you must be able to identify your problem before you can solve. That is the major stage in problem solving. Number two is generating alternative. There are several ways to solve the problem. While the evaluation of alternative is choosing the best of all those alternatives, all those various ways you chose to solve the problem. Now, developing the method of the solution is to bring out methods which can use to solve our problem. That is where the algorithm is to do called flowchart step-by-step -step procedures or how to solve it comes about then after that we're going to consider coding and implementation which is a programming tool which you can use to automate our code and the next one is program testing you know when you actually build your code it's important for us to test our code to see if it's performing the reason why it was built for example most of us cook food we just, just cook the food and bring it down, say it's ready. Sometimes, while it's towards the end of your cooking, you try to test to know that the maggie level is good or the salt level is okay. So, and also debugging is when you test there's a fault or there's an error in your code. So, the other process of removing those errors is what we call debugging. Now, the next last final stage is program documentation. Now, let's move to the first one. The first one on our list today is problem definition and that is what this video is all about now it's important for us to know that this is the most important stage in problem solving so we need to have a good understanding of the problem before we can solve the truth is this stage is very common and it may look like an easy but most difficult task to carry out why is it difficult you can't solve a problem you don't understand you must have a good understanding of the problem before you can be able to solve it. So it's important for us to diagnose the situation properly. So diagnose the situation, so why doing so should put our focus on the problem and not on the symptoms. Sometimes we try to look at the symptoms. I recall back then when I was in body house, so normally I used to have this illness, maybe malaria or due to openness of the dormitory, how dirty dormitory is at all. Most students fall sick, so by default, we should fall sick almost every term. First term, second term, and third, just like that. I remember this particular term. I fell ill, it should be in SS1. Now, one thing I knew those days was that anytime I fall, you go to health center, they would just give us anti malaria, croaking precisely. So, one particular scenario, I wasn't getting better, I was getting worse. As days goes by, they were busy giving me chloroquine, I wasn't getting better, unlike previous times that I've gone there. But this time around, I observed certain things that my urine was getting darker. No, unknown to me that it was actually my liver that was washing. So, this, it, despite the hospital trying to diagnose my situation, trying to solve my problem, they couldn't solve that. They were addre addressing a wrong issue. So, they're addressing malaria while the issue is, wasn't that. So, you need to understand the problem before you can solve. And that is why it's the most important. In every situation, maybe in, in relationship crisis, whatever you found yourself, it's important we must understand the problem. So most people focus on the symptoms, not to understand the problem. No, we need to diagnose the problem efficiently enough for us to understand what is. So now, what is problem identification? That is a process of finding a workable solution to our problem. So, and in this stage, we need to note three things. Three things, or we need must understand this: what the problem is, what is needed. To solve a particular problem and what the solution might look like but before then let me talk about what problem identification is it's the same thing as problem definition it simply means that we are organizing a situation before solving it 
So we must organize that situation and before we must be able to solve it, we must have a clear understanding of what it is. So we have to understand the, what that problem is, then what we need to solve it. Let me give for example, a student is hungry. Sorry, sorry, a student fainted. Let me say a student fainted. And one of is very fainted and we are trying to organize why did he faint? Is he malaria or is he fever? So it was because of hunger he fainted. So so to solve that problem we must make food available so to make food available so first and foremost what the problem is is hunger now what is needed to solve the hunger is food so what are the impulse we need to get food ingredients in the market the the, the things we use in cooking that we used to cook those food now assuming you are cooking them we say want to make it we say now the the, the input will be melon meat and there about then the output should be the egg soup there's no how you are you are envisaging to get to a greasy soup and you went to go and buy okra in the market so it doesn't work that way so if you're able to know what the problem is what is needed to solve the problem and finally we must know what the solution might look like i remember some i remember the day i was my friend was cooking and um, okay i met him um, making stew in my mind he was making a he was making stew in my mind he was just frying tomatoes and before i know it he just put the greasy inside i was seeking a stew but to my amazement it was still a greasy he made so he knew what he wanted and that was why he was able to the the output of that cooking was a greasy and not the stew i thought it might be so for this stage you must note three things number one what the problem is number two what the what is needed to solve a particular problem number three what the solution should provide also in this stage three techniques are very important that we must adopt and one of those techniques is brainstorming to solve any problem, you must have involve critical thinking. Very important. 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 We must brainstorm. We must brainstorm. Very important. And in, in brainstorming, we are trying to put heads together. How, how is what's the best workable way to solve this problem? Number two is interview find out interviews on people to find out what exactly is the problem sometimes you need to ask questions to understand the situation you know i've heard people when they engage in dialogue they just ask questions to cut to counter back no you don't ask questions to be you ask to understand what the person is trying to so you have to be patient to diagnose a situation if you must unsolve that problem the number also a method again is to use questionnaire so we use questionnaire to your audience or those who are affected to help to elicit information from them now those informations are gathered together put together analyzed to elicit to find out what exactly the problem is so three things we need we need to brainstorm with our team we need to carry out interview ask questions we need to share questionnaires to elicit information both interviews and uh, questionnaires at the same method at, at same method to solve problem all both are all eliciting information from the user then the other things skills that we need to adopt in problem solving active listening you must act listening well to understand number two must in involve critical analysis number three how to carry out research number one how to have creative thinking communicate with our team then finally decision making we must make good decision if we must solve good problem active listening you must listen carefully to understand not listen to counter i said that before critical analysis you have to be critical in your decision making critical in analyzing the situation for you to get at what exactly the problem is we carry out research ask questions to find out what actually the problem creativity you have to be you have to think you have to think of innovative ways to solve a particular problem then communication we have to communicate with our team members to achieve this purpose decision making must make informed choices towards achieving that goal so that's just all that we need to know about problem solving in our subsequent video we'll be looking at second stage which is alternative generative that's the original alternative and also evaluating alternative so when we get there once i'm better see you in our next video thank you